obviously Jason is gone. He's an insurance adjuster. So a big hurricane comes through. He has no choice but to go and work. And then Bailey and Connor are gone because they are also, well, Bailey's an insurance adjuster. Connor is a hopeful to be an insurance adjuster, I guess. So anyway, they're all gone. And um, <coughs> we have no drums, no guitars or anything today. And I had a crazy busy work week and then we decided to go and do some missions work yesterday in Louisiana, which, you know, if any of y'all know, know that's like my heart and it's been such a long year and a half since the Lord gave me my job to not be able to just jump up and go and help people. So it was a really, really good day for me. So we're driving home and I was thinking, well, what in the world am I going to teach tomorrow? Because this is kind of like thrown in my lap at the last minute. And um, so I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll take the easy route out and I will teach SISM, which is like how to do disaster missions work. Because I'm thinking we may go back and it's a really good thing for everybody to learn how to like minister to people in crisis. So that was my plan until about 2.30 this morning. The Lord woke me up and said, I want you to talk to these people about heaven. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, like, I've got an arsenal of things that I've talked about in the past and, you know, things that are like just, I have, you know, notes on, things like that, and I have nothing on heaven. And for some reason, the Kenny Chesney song, I don't know, I know we got quite a few country music fans in here, but the country music song, the Lord just like, I don't know, it kind of just like hit my spirit and it's a Kenny Chesney song that came out a few years ago and it everybody says Everybody wants to go to heaven but nobody wants to go now. Yeah. Everybody wants to go to heaven but nobody wants to go now. And the Lord said that's not there's a problem there because I'm in heaven. You know, like if you don't want to go to heaven, there's a problem. You know, like if people don't know obviously we don't have a right theology about heaven. We don't have a right understanding about heaven and so I was like okay so it's 2 30 in the morning I've been in Louisiana we got up at like daybreak drove down there served all day we served like 1500 meals and um it's 2 30 in the morning and I have nothing about heaven <laughs> you know like seriously like we'll we'll teach that next Sunday and the, for whatever reason I don't know who's here who needs to hear this message today but I felt like the Lord said I want people to understand about heaven. So this is gonna seem probably all jacked up, but I'm gonna do my best. So I'm actually gonna pray. Holy Spirit, you know who needs to hear what they need to hear. So I pray that you would give me the words to speak that you obviously want spoken today and that you would give the people here and maybe the people that are gonna eventually watch this on the Facebook page, the ears to hear exactly what it is that you want them to hear. I thank you for who you are, and I just thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I started off like, and this is like I'm talking last, last, last minute. So, turn to Revelations 4. I normally write the scriptures down. Jason's usually really good at putting scriptures on the wall, but... Did you say Revelation 4? Yeah, this is like so last minute. All right, so it says, Revelation 4, yeah. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, Come up here and I will show you these things that must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and the one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. So I mean like... When I read this scripture, I like try to close my eyes and imagine, you know, like this throne with the Father in the middle of it, you know, and then around that throne is like this rainbow, and is it, you know, I don't really know what Sardis stone is, I don't, you know, 
but I kind of know what an emerald is. I can imagine like if you have an emerald and like the light catching it because you know he is light and like all of this it's making this rainbow just like cast out. It's kind of how I see it. Um, and then around that is 24 thrones. And on those thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes front and back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. And the third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was flying like an eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night. They're saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him, who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you recreated all things. And so obviously there's a whole lot more scripture to that, but that was like the first scripture that kind of came to mind to me is when I'm thinking about heaven is like obviously the throne. And so it was like, I was like, okay, Lord, you know, like, what do, what do you want me to talk to people, you know, like about heaven? And so the script, and then that's when that song came to mind, you know, like that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go <coughs> right now. So like, you know, we're kind of an interactive church. So if you want to tell me like, when you think about heaven, what do you think? This right. song I can only imagine. That, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to chime in? I think about what those names mean to my life. Like the house that he said he's building. What about your love with God? I mean, what about all that? Are you married up there? Are you not married? Is everybody your brother and sister? I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm asking y'all, like, what are what are your thoughts about heaven? You know, like, because why would there? And I, and I know it's a, I guess, kind of like an understand. I mean, like, a lot of people honestly don't want to go to heaven right now. You know, and I get that. Like, I don't want to die right this minute. You know, either. But like, so what are what are y'all's thoughts on the side? If your eyes just poked out on earth, it get fixed in heaven. What'd you say? Like if your eye was lost on earth, would it be fixed in heaven? Oh, okay. Anybody else? I think I think it would be. Doesn't it say that we get like a brand new body in heaven? I mean, I, obviously all things are redeemed, so I would assume that you get a new one. I think, you know. And to answer Joey's question, isn't it, isn't the popular opinion is that like there is no marriage in heaven? Isn't that what the Bible says? I don't. I don't know about all of that. I'm talking about like. I, I mean, obviously, Dream of nobody's going to know every single thing about like how our families are. You know, whether we're going to be married. What if you've been married like ten times? You know, all that. I, mean, I do know that the Bible promises. You know that. Um, I have to find the scripture because I found it earlier. There's a whole bunch of scriptures and it's all jumbled up because it's such a short time to plan. But he says, you know, that there's not going to be any sadness, there's not going to be any tears, there's not going to be any, you know, any of the things that are here on earth, they're not going to be in heaven. So even if you are married a couple of times and your spouses are all in heaven, I think somehow that's all going to work out. You'll be able to recognize them. I saw someone well, about this the other day. Right. Right. You will be able to recognize, like it's in the Bible, you'll be able to recognize your loved ones that went on. Mm -hmm. So, um... <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, But as it is written, what I have seen nor ear has heard, what I have seen nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. And then Revelations 22, I'm just going to read some of the scriptures. 
The angel showed me a river of the water of life, bright, bright out. Apparently, I never finished reading that one. Look at that one up. Revelations 22, 1 through 5. especially in Revelation that describes, you know, like the throne, that describes like that river, you know, like a river of life. Like for me, like when I'm thinking about heaven and trying to imagine it, you know, it's like, can you even imagine like what, what would a river of life look like? And what would this tree look like that brings healing to the nations? When we look at the world that we live in right now, with all of the chaos and all of the death and all of the, you know, like there's just so much, you know, but there's going to be healing for the nations, like, because all of the nations are going to be represented in heaven, and there's going to be healing, you know, like, I, I don't know, to me, I guess what I'm trying to get, and what I feel like the Lord kind of wanted to, like, get out is that, you know, heaven, I think a lot of people, we, we have a lot of teaching over the years about hell, and nobody wants to go to hell, but how many people really want to go to heaven? You know, like, we don't think about it, or I don't think about it as much as, you know, you would think you have this awesome promise, you know, this hope of glory, like you sang about, you know, that's there, and it's ours, and we've got the ticket to go already, you know, if you are in Christ, you're going to stand there in this imaginative, I mean, just, I can't even imagine, you know, heaven and how beautiful it is. And I don't know why we wouldn't want to go. I guess I feel like I'm like totally messing this whole thing up. Because um, I'm not sure exactly what he wanted You're me to. Sense. What he wanted me to, t you know, like to get across is that being there in heaven with all of the streets of gold, you know, like I'm thinking if somebody gave me, I looked it up and I. I think I actually wrote it down. A brick of gold. So um, I think it was a 10 ounce block of gold is worth $30,000. So if each of you had walked in the door and I handed you a block of gold that was worth $30,000, think about how much less stress you would have. You know, if you knew you had $30,000, or if you even got a couple of them, you know, like, you wouldn't have as much worry and as much stress here on earth. And that's the pavement in heaven. You know, like, like some of our most precious things that would bring us so much relief here on earth is nothing but pavement there. You know, you're going to walk on it. You're going to walk on gold. Because that's how, I mean, the, the most valuable thing there is the Father and is Jesus, you know, and I don't think that we quite are grasping like the magnitude of what our promise is and what our hope is, you know, like obviously when we lose somebody, we have the hope and the, you know, promise that, hey, we're going to see our loved one again. And that to, to me has always been like the whole point behind heaven is, okay, well, I'm going to get to see my loved one again, you know, but we get to see the one that loved us the most 
again. That is the hope of glory. That is the promise of heaven. You know, that's better than seeing my daddy ever again. I get to see Jesus. You know, I get to see the Father. And you got to understand first what you just said. you got to come to terms with that. Because if you don't know that, and that then you're not really going to be thinking about how often you live since you see him in heaven. Yeah. And so, for a long time, the Lord gave me this, like, this vision of, and the reason why I got Ashley to play that song today, the, the, the blood song, is for the first part of that, that song that says, you know, it speaks a better word than all the things on this earth. You know, it, I mean, like, the blood of Jesus, like, what we have because of him makes us, you have this throne that, we, that I was talking about earlier. And the elders and these created beings, they fall down. Like every single time, the magnitude of who God is rotates around. They see a different side of God and they fall at their feet. And the elders fall down as dead, you know. And because the throne is just that magnificent. So you have all of the other cool parts about heaven, you know, the streets of gold, the gates of pearl, the river that we just read about, you know, but in the middle of that is the throne and the presence, like the very presence of God is there. And I sometimes read that and I think, over the years I would think, how could I stand there? You know, like these created beings, these elders, these People in white robes can't even stand. They fall down as dead. You know, like, how could I stand there as me, you know? And so <clears throat> the scripture that always kind of come to mind for me was, like, the Lord gave me this vision years and years and years ago is that you have the Father, and at his right hand you have Jesus. And then... You know, it says that the accuser of the brethren, so I'm a brethren, so this guy that's accusing me, which I believe to be Satan, you know, the accuser of the brethren, is saying, this is Kim, and this is what she's done, and this is Kim, she's not worthy to come to your throne. She's not worthy, you know, like all of the things that make us unworthy. And Jesus says, because it says that he's there, he's making intercession for us, which I think is like, I don't know, I love to think about heaven, and I love to think about Jesus making intercession for me, you know, and he's up there, and he's making intercession for Joey right now, you know, the enemy comes, and he says, Joey's this, or Joey's that, Joey's not worthy, and Jesus says, hey, hang on a minute, just, just hold on, look at him, and if you choose to put on the blood of Christ, when the Father looks at you, he sees Jesus, perfect lamb that was slain. So, I mean, that is the, that's the gospel right there, you know, and it's like that gives us the opportunity to go before the throne in this <coughs> awesome, amazing heaven and walk up, you know, boldly to that throne and be covered in Christ and be able to be able to stand there and say, hey, you know, you're my father because when he looks at us, he sees what Christ did. You know, so you can't really, to me, you can't really talk about heaven and not talk about Christ, you know, because he's the one that makes us able to even go there and able to be able to stand in that presence. And I just, I don't know, I feel like if we could ever really truly grasp how worthy he makes us to go to the Father, eventually in heaven, in person, it says that right now it's like a mirror. But one day we're going to be face to face. I mean, can you imagine the God that created the whole universe, that created the trees and, you know, everything that we have here, that also created this magnificent heaven for us to go to, and that we're going to go and be able to stand face to face with him. You know, I mean, it should kill us to be in his presence, you know. But only with the blood of Christ, I mean, it's like it covers us. And it does speak a better word, you know, like... When, when, when she sings that song about the blood of Christ, you know, it just, it makes me just imagine like that, you know, that I'm standing before him one day, and we're all going to stand before him, every single one of us. But it doesn't have to be a big, scary thing as long as you're covered in that blood, you know. And 
<laughs> it should be like if you know that you know that you have that hope of glory, that you are covered in his blood, that you've accepted him as your sacrifice, we should want to go to heaven. <laughs> you know, like be excited about the idea of standing in his presence, you know. And, and I think a lot of times maybe we're, we think it's going to be boring. We think that there's, you know, like you're just going to be like this long, drawn-out church service forever, you know. And I don't have, know all of the answers to that. But I don't think that the God that created this universe and this world that we live in would create something that's not going to be amazing for eternity. You know, like he died for us to have that eternity. So it has to be pretty awesome. Well, okay. you, know, you said that. I was, I was thinking that before you brought that up about it being, I wasn't thinking about it being boring. Like, I don't feel that way, but I saw somebody who's not a Christian post on Facebook. Like they can look like a meme, and they were saying like, basically, they prefer to go to hell because they don't want to get their sins like to God all day. And um, like, wow, but but you don't you don't know unless you look in the Word and see what does it say, like say about oh, heaven. It sounds like you know God wants us to dream about heaven, what it's like, and look in the Word. Yeah, that's that's kind of a I guess maybe why he wanted us to talk about this and and like I said I, I feel like I have completely unprepared like I have a lot of scriptures that talk about heaven if you want to get with me later and like do some study on your own you know because I mean don't, I say all the time you know like I, I, I long for the presence of the Lord you know like and he's here and he's with us now but that face to face that you know, I mean, think about, like, somebody that you love, 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 and you can talk to them on the phone and you can FaceTime them. You know, I've been FaceTiming Blakely for two months now, and it's awesome to get to see her, and it's awesome to get to talk to her. But when she walked in the door the other day and I got to hold her and actually be in her presence, I mean, there's nothing to compare, you know, and we have his presence here right now. But like the scripture said, it's, and I believe it's, I usually have like really five, ten pages of notes. When I was two o'clock in the morning, you were forgiven. But anyway, I could Google it. But there's a scripture that says, you know, that it's like, that for now it's like a mirror. You know, like you're looking in a mirror and you can see you know, the Father, you can be in his presence, but one day we're going to be face to face in his presence. And it's like, that is, a, I mean, it, it's hard to even imagine. Like Chalon was saying that song, you know, I can only imagine, like, what will I do? I don't, I don't know. You know, like, will I fall down? Will I stand will in your presence? Will, will I dance? Will I, will I sing? You know, I mean, like, we don't know what we'll do in his presence, and I don't think that we're just going to stand there and sing all day long personally. I mean, he created this earth for us. He didn't create the sin. We brought that in. But think about all the awesome things that you enjoy doing on this earth. You know, I feel like we're going to be doing those same things in heaven. You know, I mean, if he can create earth as awesome as it is, heaven's got to be a hundred times, maybe a million times better, you know. But the best thing about heaven is that we're going to be in his presence. You know, like, there will be nothing separating us anymore. You know, that is something that we can't really imagine right now, but he apparently wants us to. Because I have no, I mean, I'm telling you, like, I was sound asleep, woke up, and I said, I felt like, I mean, just plain as say, I want you to talk to people about heaven. You know, and it's like, why? You know, like, what, what am I supposed to say? You know, like, I had no, no plans to talk about this. But heaven is real, you know. I know that it's as real as this church that we're standing in now. And in heaven is the Father. And one day, we're all going to be there. And if we're ready to be there and we have Christ, we're going to, there's scripture about ruling and reigning, you know, things that I personally don't feel like I care that much about, you know. But it's in there for a reason. You know, so I guess, I guess to kind of end this is, for one, 
if you don't know Jesus and you don't have that assurance that you've put on Christ, that one day when you stand there before that throne, that the Father's going to look, I mean, he's going to look up. And like I said, all the things, all of the sin, everything, the accuser is going to be saying, hey, this, this, and this. But Jesus, I mean, I can just, I can imagine, like I see it, like it's like I'm watching a movie. Jesus just stand up and say, wait, wait a minute, look at her. She's covered in my blood. I mean, like, it doesn't matter about any of that. It's covered. I took care of it, you know. And he wants to take care of all of that. So that you don't have to fear death, you know. He says, I, I took death, hell, and the grave. He took the keys to all of that. You know, and then in the psalm that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, he he's already taken care of all of that. So it's something that we don't have to fear and we don't have to worry about. Because it's nothing that you can do except to choose Christ. And except to choose his sacrifice that he made for you. And so when you think about heaven, I mean, I really, I, I pray and I hope that the Lord gives you dreams and visions and you imagine those trees and you can feel those leaves that bring healing to the nations and you can see that crystal water and feel peace and feel, because when I think of crystal water, I think of peace, you know, like this beautiful flowing peace that just covers everything, you know, and I would like to live in that, you know, I would love to live in the joy of the Lord, where every day you get up and you just, you experience nothing but peace and joy and happiness and, and perfection, you know, like common communion with the Lord, where you just spend your day in communion with Him, you know, and that is the hope of glory, you know, that is what we believe that we're going to have one day and you know I'm not ready to die today I mean if I do die I can guarantee you y'all don't be calling me back <laughs> <You know? laughs> don't be praying for me to come back or any of that kind of stuff because I want to be there in his presence but I do know that I have an assignment and I have other people <coughs> the Lord wants me to bring there with him so I don't want to go today, but not for the Kenny Chesney reasons in that song, you know. I mean, I don't want to stay here and have fun on earth. I want to bring more people with me to heaven, but, you know, make sure today, you know, if you want to, if you, if you don't know for sure that you're ready and you want to pray and have that assurance, don't wait today. None of us are promised tomorrow, you know. And I remember sitting in church, and they would always end the services with like, you know, you're not promised tomorrow. You might not even make it home, you know. And, and, and I know that they said, make sure that you're right with the Lord, that you, you know, that you'll be standing in his presence in heaven. But in my heart, in my mind, as a kid growing up, it was like, oh, you know, like, man, I better pray and make sure I'm good because I don't want to go to hell. You know, I never grasped that I wanted to go to heaven. You know, and I think that's kind of what he's wanting us to understand today is that it's not, I don't want to go to hell, but you really, really, really want to come to heaven. You really want to spend some time with him and spend some time with the Father and see that throne. You know, like, that's amazing to me to even think that we're going to get to see all of that, you know. And um, so if you want to pray, if you're not ready, if you want to, you know, see all of this, amazing stuff in heaven do it today don't wait you know and then second ask the Lord to start revealing to you different aspects of heaven and different aspects of him and his glory and all those things because I don't feel like I put it out there as awesome as I wanted to but um anyway I guess that's it Probably John didn't put it out there as awesome as he wanted to either I'm because sure. <laughs> how do you explain something? to? It's like explaining a dream to someone. They don't get it, you know. Yeah, you can't, and I don't think that we can get it, you know. He says you're, you can't even imagine it, you know. Yeah, I like, don't um, but I was wanting to tell y'all, I have watched a documentary and I actually read a book too 
about people that have had near death experiences. And it's so interesting. Some of them were not, like, didn't have any type of faith. And they came out of it believing, like, okay, there is a, like, a God. There's something in most of them. Every now and then there's people that have, like, a bad experience, near death experience. But for the most part, the main theme is, like, it just sounds so awesome. Like, they don't want to come back because it just, they see the light and the angels and the like it's, it's, it's real and they feel good and they want to come back. Well, y'all pray me back until my daughter's grown. <laughs> well, I guess, I don't know. I don't really know how to end this because I, I don't know. I'm losing, losing it. I'm like, but does anybody want to come up and pray? Does anybody need to get, you know, get that assurance today? If not, then I guess I will pray and if you do and you want to just talk to me afterwards, that's cool too. Um, there really is nothing better. You know, I, a few years ago, I guess it's been about six years ago, felt like the Lord called me to go over to Nepal after that earthquake that was there. And I remember standing in my yard and, you know, getting ready to go over there and, you know, I'm going to, a little lady from Mississippi is going to get on the airplane and fly across the ocean all by myself and go to a country that I didn't speak the language that had just had like a major earthquake and you know 10,000 people died in like 45 seconds and you know I was standing in my yard and the Lord of me was like will you still go if you don't come back you know and it, at that point is when the Lord really started showing me and teaching me you know some things about heaven and to, to where I, I just really wanted to be in his presence you know and it was like I did go and I did almost not come back and for a long time I almost kind of felt cheated you know like like he was that was such an attainable dream of being in the presence of the Lord you know like and I, and I really struggled for a while because I really did not expect to come back I mean if the Lord asks you will you go if you don't come back in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not coming back, you know. I'm going to be in heaven before this trip is over, you know. Um, and I, for a long time, I, you know, just would, and you can ask my mom because I talk to, to her about it all the time, you know, about, you know, about heaven and just imagining and seeing and, and dreaming about what it's going to be like to be in his presence and not have anything dividing us anymore. And, um, that's a good place to be because it allows you, I think a lot of the, uh, maybe the reason why the Lord wanted me to share about heaven today is if you don't fear death and if you don't fear um, and you're truly, you know, to the point to where you're looking forward to being in his presence and looking forward to being with him, it frees you up to do so much stuff here on earth that he needs doing. I mean, there is a hurting, dying, scared world out there right now. And a lot of times we're held back because of fear, you know. But when you truly understand and grasp, you know, that when he says, you know, I've got the keys to death, hell, and the grave, that means that as his child, you don't have to worry about death. You know, you can go and do what he called you to do, and if you die, you are with Christ. You know, and, you know, hell, you know, the keys to death, the keys to hell, you know, if you know that you know that you have that assurance that hell is not even, you don't have to worry about it ever again, you know, that is not your final destination, that is not your eternity, and the grave, you know, I mean, the grave's not going to hold you, you're going to be with him, you know, and it's, I mean, it is such a freeing and such a, such a great way to live for him when you don't have to be afraid of eternity you know and we can live for him not afraid of eternity but looking forward to eternity that that's the thing that that i think he wanted to get across more than anything is looking forward to eternity with him that is just it's something that we can't really imagine but he can teach us and he can show us and he can give us 
that peace, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit has been there, you know, in the presence of the Father. He's been in heaven. He knows what heaven looks like. He can, he can give you that excitement for the Father and that excitement for heaven. But we just have to ask him and, and listen, I guess. That's all I got. So. Father, I thank you for your son. I thank you for the sacrifice that he made for us. I thank you for his blood. Jesus, I thank you so much that you shed that blood for me. That I can stand before the Father one day and be 100% complete and pure and covered by what you sacrificed. Father, I pray that you would even expand everyone's thoughts and everyone's understanding of heaven, that we would understand our eternity in you even better after today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would go with each one of us throughout this week, that we would be just bubbling over with the hope of glory that we have, and that we would be ready to share it with the person that we come in contact with that maybe doesn't have that hope, Father. Give us the boldness and the excitement to be able to share that hope and that they too would be there standing beside us in heaven one day. Father, I thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing. And I pray that you would just be with us throughout the week and bring us back next week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.